our Facebook and YouTube family. Always good to have you with us every Sunday. Let us pray. Kind and merciful God, our Father, we come at this hour of your preach word. Hide me again, your man servant, behind the sacred desk. Oh God, I'm asking you to cover me. Let my imperfections never be a distraction to those who need to hear from you. Oh God, uh, we need to hear from you today. Stand up in me, God, so that my knees will not buckle and that my throat would be clear. Help me, oh God, not to err, but to preach only your word. Lord, let me take no glory and take no praise in what the response is, but only you receive all glory and honor. For all we want to do, oh God, is stand for you. Bless, oh God, your people as they hear your word and that they will have a heart to receive it and be changed. For this we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Our scripture for this morning message is coming from the book of Daniel. Daniel, the first chapter, starting at verse 3 through 17. And we will be using the English Standard Version for your translation here. Again, the book of Daniel, Old Testament. We ask you to stand when you can, if you have your power to do so, to honor God's word. Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 through 17. And again, is the English Standard Version is our translation. If you're with a family member, reach over if you don't mind. I know we still practice some protocols for COVID, but if you're with a family member, they don't have a word, a Bible with them, share yours so they can see Daniel. Daniel, the first chapter, 3 through 17. And I always encourage you in my preaching, keep your Bibles open because I refer back to the Bible for it's not enough for you to hear the word, but you need to see that what I've shared is yeah. there. Yeah. And so I encourage you to do that. Daniel, again, chapter 1, verses 3 through 17, and the word of God said, Then the king commanded Aspenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youth without blemish of good appearance and skinful, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king palace and to teach them uh, the lit literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate right. and of the wine that he drank. Uh -huh. They were to be uh, educated for three years and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. Uh -huh. And the chief of the eunuch gave them names. Daniel he called Belshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach and Mishael, and he called Mishael, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved, don't miss that, that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who assigned your food and your drink, for why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youth who are of your own age. So you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, 
whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He says, verse 12, test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables and eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youth who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this manner, uh, matter and tested them for 10 days. After the end of the 10 days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youth who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and the wine that were to drink and gave them vegetables. In other words, I know the king food is good, but I'm going to take that away and give you what you've asked for. Verse 17, as for these four youth, God gave them learning and skills in all lectures and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Yes. Our key verse for this morning text is coming from verse 8. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food yes. or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself. Right. As you take your seats, I and if God would allow, I'd like to preach shortly just from this thought. All right. You can't be everybody's flavor. Right. You can't be everybody's right. flavor. In this age of needing to be accepted, young people are doing whatever is necessary to be accepted in the group, whatever is necessary to be on that special list when the invitation goes out for the party or the gathering. We're uh, picking up habits of others in order for them not to think that we are square because we've announced that we are Christians just to make sure we fit in. Yeah. And so it is also with adults. Adults, they to gain friendship, to, to make sure that other folks will think that we can be able to run with them. We are pretending that whatever you do is all right with me because that's your thing. It ain't my thing. Just as long as you keep me as your friend. We accept some lifestyles and some worldly position that is contrary to how you know you and I were raised just to be in the cliques with everybody else. Well, even in the church now, and it has moved from uh, the youth to, to the adults, but it's in the church for from the pulpit. Let me just start right there. From the pulpit all the way to the door. We have decided now from the preaching position that everything that the Bible speaks about is really not facts. Uh, it's alternative facts, and that's what some preachers are saying. They begin to preach their own facts because they want to fill up the pews. They want the congregation to shout every time they say amen. And they want to make sure that the money keeps coming in because we want to make sure that everybody gets what they want. But beloved, as Christians, we have a solemn responsibility to Christ to differentiate ourselves from those who have the world traits in them. Yeah. Now, it does not say that we need to be mean to them and that we can't get along with them, but we have a responsibility for the Lord said that we have been called out. We are special people yeah. and that we should be able to be identified. Yeah. Oh, beloved, beloved, but it's difficult now to when you come into the presence of someone to know if they really are a believer or not. Right. Have I got a witness? Right. Talk back to me if you can. You, you can't be everybody's flavor. Yeah. But now many are like uh, 
the Louis uh, Vuitton and Gucci bag. We we can't tell the knockoffs from the original. Now, now, I, I, I know First Lady was saying, no, I know the original. She's sharp enough. She knows the original. But but, but, but we are like that. You know, we, we, we can't tell. Are you a knockoff Christian? Or are you the real deal? For Timothy, Captain Timothy says, they will go on pretending to be uh, devoted. I like this is the easy reading, reading version. The easy reading version says it's like this. 2 Timothy 3 and 5. They will go on pretending to be devoted to God, but they will refuse to let that devotion, hear me now, change the way they live. Stay away from these kind of folk. That's what it says. For I love this song that we used to sing down south. If you got good religion, you ought to show some sign. And then what I have a problem with that I don't know who I'm dealing with because the signs that I see and then when I leave here and find you Monday through Saturday, those signs fool me. But I saw you shouting here last week. I saw you raising your hand. I saw you giving God glory with your soul. But was I saw you on Monday and heard what you were talking about and what you were looking like, I wonder, has there been any transformation to your heart? You can't be everybody's flavor. There used to be a program, there was a guy who used to come on, his name was Flavor Flav. And Flavor Flav would try to let you know that whatever flavor of the month, whatever flavor that you were coming with, it's all right with me. And I found out today that, that, that we, as the Bible says, are losing our salt. For the Christian needs to be salt. For He said, the Bible says, when you lose your stamina or your saltiness, you're not good for nothing to be but trample on. And, and beloved, I don't want anybody to trample on me for... I don't want God to say, depart from me. I know you're not. And that's why I, I can't be everybody's flavor. Here in the background, beloved, here in the background of the text of morning, here is uh, the background of Daniel. As Daniel now and three of his friends have been taken into captivity by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, he has decided because he's seen in them some props, he's seen in them some royalty, he's seen some specialness in them. So Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is now put into a special training class to get them to be leaders of the Babylonian folk and worship Nebuchadnezzar after three years. And so uh, they make the decision now, the king does, Nebuchadnezzar, to, if they're going to be my uh, sidekick and they're going to lead my people, they need to eat what I eat. They need to drink what I drink. And they need the best of tutoring. What King Nebuchadnezzar forgot or didn't understand was Daniel, Meshach, uh, Abednego, Shadrach, and Abednego, they already had a king. And so he thought that he needed to make sure that they understood who the real king was. No, no, Nebuchadnezzar, they, they came to you knowing who their king is. Is there anybody in this morning know who your king is? Uh, I want you to know today that it is not who's in the White House. It's not who is the mayor of the city. It's not who's on the city council, but I serve King Jesus. And, and whatever I need, he's able to provide. Whatever I'm going through, he's able to break me out. I, I know sometimes I might ask for help. I might need some social program. But it wasn't you. It was God who put it in me to help me. And so I know who my king is. The Christian, the Christian used to be proud to 
to identify that they were Christians. But now we have returned to the closet and decided to remain hidden. But beloved, not so with Daniel. I love this about Daniel for even in captivity. You know, somebody would say, well, you know what? What y'all expect a person to do? Look, I ain't not, I'm not even where I belong. I, and if I'm going to make it, I got to get along to get along. I, I got to do what they do. I got to act like they like. Because y'all know I ain't with no party with nobody who's with me who's going to help me to get through what I'm going to get through. But not with Daniel. Daniel said, put me wherever you put me. I'm still going to let my Christian light shine. I'm still going to let you know that I serve a God who made heaven and earth. I wish we had more Christians that wouldn't shrink, shrink down to this size just because they don't have some other Christians with them or if they're in a strange place. You know, some of us are like a chameleon. Mm -hmm. We change because we don't want folk to begin to reject us. And it's the flavor of the day that we're around. That's what we'll change to. If it's great, we'll be great. If it's fruit punch, we'll be fruit punch. I like fruit punch, y'all. We'll be fruit punch. Whatever the flavor of the day is, y'all know, but I I like Mountain Dew, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say y'all bad because y'all got those other drinks. But but God is saying, be true to who you are, young people. Be true to who you are. God is saying today, there's no shame in your Christian game. You ought to let some folk know that I'm. A Christian, and I'm proud to be one. Yeah. Uh, my my son-in-law has taught uh, my two grandchildren the same. Now we got a saying that goes a long way. When we fit to leave, we we we, we would say uh, after a while, the little girl that they would say crocodile, yeah. and they would say see you later. They say alligator, yeah. and then the last thing they would say blah 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 blah. I don't know who taught them that blah blah blah, but they have to say that. But they learned a new one. Then they will say, give me the fist bump, stay black, stay black. In other words, don't be ashamed that you're black. Oh, I'm so glad that he taught him that because when we get amongst some other folk, we don't want to acknowledge that we are black. He says, stay black. In other words, what we taught you is the right thing to believe in. And beloved, uh, some of us need to go back to being black, being Christian. Stay what your mom and your daddy and your grandma and grandpa taught you. You can't be everybody's slave. And if the church would come back to Christ, the movement that we would have, the change that we would have, would be so awesome in our community if we if we could just get the church to go back to Christ instead of all these other gimmicks and all of these other things that we're trying to say that we are about. Well, beloved, I I got three things real quick, and we're gonna get out of here and go home, and I'm gonna take another long nap because I'm tired, and I know you are as well. But beloved, I, before I let you do that, I've got three things that I want to share with you that I see in the text to help us understand what does uh, looking like everybody flavor should look like or what it should look like. I, I want you to take these notes of this thing about you can't be everybody's flavor. And this what looks like or this what it looks like when you're not everybody's flavor. Point one. Point one says this. What is acceptable to others, your standards must go beyond. 
what is acceptable to others, your standards must go beyond. Notice I didn't say that stuff is all wrong, but your, sometimes your standards just got to go beyond there. Okay. All right, but here it is. Here it is. I'm in the text. The king assigned them daily portion of who food? The king's food. But uh, Daniel said, your food and your drink can't be my drink. He said, because uh, uh, my God has given us specific instructions of what our food should look like. I'm not saying your food is not good food. I'm just saying that what my standards are has to go beyond what you say is okay. Uh, it's amazing today how many Christians have become weed smokers. Marijuana, since you, I'm going back to call it weed, but marijuana. I know in the state of Michigan, it has been approved for recreational use. But there are some standards that we should have never gone to. There are some standards that a believer won't allow him or herself to go to. I know somebody may say it's okay to drink a little brown liquor once in a while. But there are some things that once we have been delivered from, we ought to not go back, we ought to not go back to. And so it, you have to make a decision that my standards are higher than yours. Yeah. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm just saying that I have been set apart. I, I have been paid as special. I have been anointed to be the spokesperson for God. And because of who he is and what he stands for, what looks acceptable to you. My standards have to go beyond that. Uh, let me say this. Let me, let me take a minute now uh, to speak to the young people. You can't grow up, young people, to be a beautiful young lady and a beautiful young man if you keep listening to slut rap. I just saw this term the other day, slut rap. Somebody said, what is slut rap, Pastor? Well, uh, I understand that we all was young and that there's music of the secular uh, uh, origin that we all listen to. I'm nothing wrong with that. But that or there ought to be a point where you don't go beyond. Slut rap is uh, when you hear the artist referring to our beautiful ladies as bees and calling each other the N word every other word. You can't keep listening to that garbage and expect to grow up a beautiful young lady and a young man. I, I, I'm tired of us saying that's our culture, that's who we are. No, we're not that. And, and you don't have to go there. That You ought to have some standards that say, I'm not going to that point. Yeah. Oh, there were some parties, there were some parties that we went to as young people, but there was a place called Letha. Oh we would drive by Letha. Uh -huh. We would look at Letha. But don't you know, until I got real old before I said, I just want to see what's in Letha. Before on the day, I just walked in and said, there's a little hole in the wall. Why are all these folks on Saturday night? We can't even get to the grocery store because they, as far as you can see, like we were here yesterday, look at all these cars, all these folks going to Letha. A hole in the wall, a junk joint. But mama and daddy taught us it's okay to go to your sock hop. It's okay to go to your friend's party. But I better not catch you and leave you. And so we knew that there was boundaries. And what I'm trying to let young people and even adults know today 
You can't be everybody's flavor. You ought to have some standards that you go beyond what other folks would put up with. The church has to go back to some standards that everything don't come up in here and we use it and call it worship. We have got to know that we are setting the bar high and we want others to know that we are worshiping a true and a holy God. And so when you come in here, it's not going to be like the place you left at 1 a.m. It's got to look like, it's got to act like, it's got to feel like, and it's got to sound like this is the place of God. Well, go down the street. I don't know what they're doing, but I'm not in charge of what they do. I'm responsible for Beulah First, 4643 Moraine. And because he has assigned me here, I can't be everybody's flavor. The second thing that I see in the text, I, I've told you, I've told you, you're, you must, you must uh, have standards that go beyond where others will end. The second thing that I see in the text that you can't be everybody's flavor, your righteousness need not be offensive to those who have yet to receive or understand Jesus. I'll say that again. Your righteousness need not, hear me now, be offensive to those who have yet to receive or understand Jesus. You know, uh, when first, when people got to be saved, they thought that in order to be a Christian, you needed to offend people. As I'm holy, I serve a holy God. You on your way to hell, and I can't have anything to do with you. And, uh, we talk down to them, we talk at them, uh, because now we are holy. Look at that Daniel. Daniel was righteous. But look how he responded yeah. in a captivity position mm -hmm. needing to tell the eunuch that he wasn't going to take the food that he was offering. I'm in the text. I'm in verse 8. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, what's the therefore? He asked the chief of the units to allow him. In other words, I ain't gonna take what you're giving me. I'm, I serve God, and for God I live, and for God I die. All oh, y'all going to hell, and watch my God destroy all of y'all. No, that Daniel. Uh, that, that Daniel didn't say that. Daniel said, if I talk, in a respectable way. And if I show how God is in me, there may be an opportunity that I'll convert them. We've got to stop thinking that we, because we have been accepted by Christ, uh, for that when we speak, as long as it's truth, doesn't matter how it's been said. No, that's the wrong thing. I looking on Facebook the other day, somebody put that. If it's truth, they ought to get over it. No, no. Truth can be truth, but truth can still be wrong in how you present it. Daniel said, I'm going to ask. Because, you know what? There are greater works for me. And if I learn how to master this assignment, God has more assignments for me. The reason why some folk don't grow as Christians because when they got saved, they thought they needed to be as mean as a rattlesnake. And nobody wants to be around a rattlesnake. And so when they have gifts, nobody wants to use them because they know when, when they come, you got to deal with a whole lot that you got to unpack. No, I'm not saying that you compromise and you turn from who you are. But as a Christian, there's a time now 
that we ought to be able to not let our righteousness yeah. offend those who are yet to receive Amen. or understand Jesus. Amen. Because if we have the right approach, Deacon Harrison, we can bring more into Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And so Daniel knew as he was the spokesman, it didn't say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego yeah. did the talking. It said Daniel. Yeah. And Daniel realized that he had others' lives in his hand. Yeah. Uh, you've got others' lives in your hand. Yeah. Mama and Daddy, how you speak yeah. and how you carry yourself will determine will that boy or girl, will they make it out of high school? Yeah. When they go on to college, it's all about how you speak yeah. and how you talk. Mama and Big Mama and maybe Papa, maybe you are the head person of the family. It's about how you talk and how you speak. Yeah. Maybe it's uncle and auntie. It's about how you talk yeah. will make a difference in who will make it and who will not. Yeah. And so Daniel made sure that he talked yeah. in a right way. Yeah. For Proverbs 15 and 1 says, a soft word turns away yeah. laugh. But a harsh word stirs of yeah. anger. Yeah. Well, let me move on. I told you my first point was what is acceptable to others, your standards must go beyond. You can't be everybody's flavor. Point two says your righteousness need not be offensive to those who have yet to receive or understand Jesus. Oh, but the third point says this. If you, third point, if you haven't put your faith to the test lately, mm -hmm. it may be a sign you are becoming everybody's flavor. Oh. If you haven't put your faith right. to the test yeah. lately, yeah. Yeah. it might be a sign you are becoming Everybody's flavor. Look at the text. Verse 12 says this. Test your servant. That's Daniel talking. Test all of us, the four of us. Test your servants for 10 days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Verse 13. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youth who ate the king's food be observed by you. And then whatever the outcome is, we'll accept it. Deal with your service accordingly. Oh, I love it when we decide to put our faith on the line. Right now. So many of us uh, has become lukewarm and we have not decided to stand for much. Yeah. And the Lord is saying today, the reason why the world is the way it is is because you have not put your faith to the test. And you have now become everybody's flavor. What was the last, or when was the last time you put your faith to the test. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15 and 13 says, Don't be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Oh, yeah. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But you are a chosen race, yeah. a royal priesthood, yeah. a holy nation, a people yeah. for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who calls you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Second Corinthians 7 and 1 says, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every uh, defilement of our body and spirit bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. I've got to put myself to the test and I've got to 
try my faith to show that I ain't afraid to let folks know I, that I'm a Christian. I'm not afraid to put my faith out there and watch God perform. Yeah. As I close, brethren, if what is happening in our streets doesn't bother you, you are becoming everybody's flavor. If you're not uh, disturbed by the boys that don't know if he's a girl and a girl that don't know that he's a boy in our classroom, you are becoming everybody's flavor. Uh, beloved, if your house is the house that everybody wants to come to, when they say to you, everyone, we're going over there because we're going to let our hair down, you're becoming everybody's flavor. Uh, if you have more people calling you about what's wrong with the church than those who are calling you to pray for the church, uh, you are becoming everybody's flavor. If they don't have a problem cursing in your presence, and you say nothing about it, you are becoming everybody's flavor. If you okay that the church is a place where you meet just to see your friends Sunday after Sunday and you're not concerned about it, if they're doing any ministry and you haven't joined any ministry, you are becoming Body's flavor. And so, beloved, as I close, I'm crying out right now. I'm calling out to God for you right now. Lord, help us, Lord. Help us. Help us not be the flavor of the month. Help us, God, to see the true flavor of your blood. Help us, God, to go back to what you showed us like on Calvary. Help us, God, to be the true Christian that you're calling for. Help us, God, to love each other like we should. Help us, God, to care for the poor like we should. Help us, God, to seek righteousness and holiness. Help us, God, to have some standards that every and anything just don't go with us. Help us, God, to be willing to walk away from some stuff. Help us, God. So don't let our flavor of you be worthless. Help us, God, to embrace what you call us to. Help us, God, to embrace your dying on Calvary for us. Help us, God, to not waste the promises that you have declared for us. Yeah. But you've made it clear in your word. Yeah. If the promises are going to be yea and amen, uh -huh. oh, yeah. we can't be everybody's flavor. Yeah. The doors of the church is open. Yeah.